Hey guys, welcome back to another calculus video. This is chapter four, section one, uh, the extreme value theorem. You guys have, uh, in my class, have been doing things a little bit out of order. And so there will be a couple of terms that I use from sections four, two, and three. If you're watching this later, uh, you may need to look ahead to four, two, and three to understand what I'm talking about when I talk about critical numbers and things like that. But for my current class, we should be good to go ahead. So we're looking at what's known as the extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem says this, that if you have a function that is continuous on a closed interval, then f definitely has a maximum value and it definitely has a minimum value. Like you automatically have one. And if you don't have a closed interval or you're not continuous, this is not guaranteed. And there's some pictures in the textbook that will show you that. I'm not going to get into the theory a whole lot with you, but for those of you that are going on, you may want to look over that a little bit so that you have a better feel for what, what could happen. Uh, but for all of our problems, we'll be giving you continuous functions on closed intervals, and so then you're good. So then the real question for us in this section is not necessarily when do you have them, because if you're continuous on a closed interval, and that's what we're going to do most of the time, you're going to have them. That's not the issue. The issue is how do we find them? Okay, where do these extreme values occur? And they actually only occur in one of two places. They occur either local max and mins, right? So we did those, again, if you are following along our class, we did those in sections four, two, and three. We talked about local extreme values. And those happen at the critical numbers, the places where the first derivative was equal to zero or not existing, okay? But the other option is that you could have a max or a min at your endpoints, okay? So we're, we're down to two options. And because we're up down to only two options, we're going to handle these extreme value problems in a different way than we have in previous problems. All right, so the method that you're getting ready to learn from me for section 4.1 is perfect for 4.1, is the only thing you need to use in 4.1, and you will never use it other than 4.1, okay? It is a unique method to the extreme value system, okay? So, and, and it's called, basically it's called the candidates test. We'll talk about what that looks like here in a minute but let's just uh, run forward and do an example, okay? So we want to find the absolute max and min values of the function f of x equal to x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x. That should have an x there. And so we want to find the absolute max and min values of that. So step one is since the only places they can occur are endpoints and critical numbers, you got to find your critical numbers. So take your derivative Derivative of this is just 3x squared minus 6x minus 9, simple enough. Set it equal to 0. Factor out that common 3. And you're left with uh, x squared minus 2x minus 3. And if I did my job correctly here, I factors into x minus 3 and x plus 1. Okay, so we have two critical numbers, 3 and minus 1. Okay, so we have this closed interval from negative 2 to 2, and what that means is we are only interested in x's that are between negative 2 and 2 to find the max and min values. f may be bigger at 4, but we don't care because 4 is not in our interval. Well, what's the first thing you notice here about these critical numbers? One of them is not part of our interval. 3 is not part of our interval. So even though you found it and you need to find all the critical numbers, if there are any that do not fall into the closed interval that you're interested in, then you have to get rid of them. You do not test points that are not in your interval, okay? So that's one thing you need to be aware of. And then step two is exactly what I said before. It's called the candidates test. And what is the candidates test? Well, what's a candidate, right? A candidate is somebody that's running for office, somebody that is possible for the position, all right? And so negative 2 and 2 are possible for the position of absolute maximum or minimum. Negative 1, based on what we talked about before, is a candidate for the largest or smallest value for f. And those are the only candidates. That's all there are. So instead of making a sign chart, instead of trying to look at increasing, decreasing, and all that kind of stuff, we're just going to test. There's only three of them. <clears throat> now, if there were 27, we might not want to do this, but there are three in this case. And so we test them. Where do we test them? We test them inside the original function, not the derivative. We're looking for the absolute max and min of the 
f of x function. So that's where we plug them in because the largest value is your max. The smallest value is your min. It's that simple. And so when we plug these in, we get negative 2 cubed minus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 9 times negative 2. Right? Use your calculator. Be smart about this. Don't try to do that in your head. That evaluates to be negative 2. Plug in negative 1. Negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 squared minus 9 times negative 1. That's 5. And then 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared minus 9 times 2. If we calculate that out, so which is the largest of these three values? This is the maximum here. 5 is your maximum. It happens at negative 1. So negative 1, 5 is your max. And negative 22 is the minimum. And so the point 2, negative 22 is your min. Okay? And that's the whole process. That's all you have to do. And every one of these problems is solved exactly the same way every single time. All right? So, as usual, here's what I want you to do. Here's a second problem. I want you to pause the video at this point, and I want you to try it. Do what you can, see what you find, and then come back, and we will go over it together. Okay, so step one, find the derivative. This is a product, so you gotta do the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. We set this equal to zero. There's a common factor of e to the x, so pull it out, and you get one plus x here. Remember that e to the x is never zero, so that's not gonna give us any critical values at all. One plus x is equal to zero when x is equal to negative one. So your only critical number is negative one. To do the candidates test, we're gonna take f of negative two, f of negative one, and f of two to look for the mins and the maxes. So we get negative two e to the negative two. We need to get a, an approximation for that. So just plug it into your calculator. This is approximately negative 0.27. Plug in negative one, you get negative one e to the negative one, which is negative 0.37. Round it off and then you get 2e squared here, 2e to the 2. And that's obviously going to be much bigger. 14.78. So this is your maximum by far. This is smaller, it's more negative, so that's the minimum. So once again, we have our minimum value at negative 1, negative e to the negative 1. Even though we rounded it off, you need to report it exactly. And then the maximum value is 2, and then 2e to the second power. That's your max. Okay? So that's all this section is. Find your worksheets in D2L. You got homework in my math lab. But this is literally all you do in section 4.1. So as always, shoot me an email if you got questions, and we'll see you later. Thanks.